Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. This video will be about the async and await functions for coroutines. So if we have several suspend functions and execute them both in a coroutine, then they are sequential by default, which means the first function will be executed first and when it is finished, the second one will be executed. However, if we want to do two network calls, for example, then we actually don't want to make them one after another. We rather want them to be executed at the same time. So for demonstration, let's actually create two suspend functions, um, network call one, that return a string, and simply delay this function for three seconds, and then return answer one. Then we can copy that function and paste it below, just for the second network call, network call two, and return answer two. So if we now launch a coroutine here, globalscope.launch, and I will, I will launch it in the IO dispatcher, dispatches.io, and inside of this coroutine, we write something like val answer one is equal to network call one, duplicate that line and do the same for our second answer. And then print a log message, log d, pass our tag, and print answer one is, and then pass our value of answer one. Duplicate that line with control D. Do the same for answer two. What I want to show you with that now is that we execute that network call one function first, and then we execute network call two. And both functions delay the current coroutine for three seconds. And what you will see is that they, that if we execute both one after another, it will actually take six seconds until this code gets executed. But in practice, if we have two different network calls like we have here, then we could just execute them asynchronously, so at the same time, so that we can go on with this code after only three seconds. And to show you that time difference, Kotlin has a very cool function with which we can easily measure the time a piece of code needs for execution. And that function is called measure time millis. And this will just have this code block and it will measure the time of the code we will put inside of this block. And then we can simply print a log after that, that prints how long this piece of code needed to execute. So we can simply write requests took and then pass our time milliseconds. So now let's run our app and take a look in Logcat. You see, the network calls are running and when they are done, it will print both answers and the requests took about six seconds. So that is definitely not what we want. So how could we solve this problem? Well, what we could do is we could just start a new coroutine for each function we execute and set the answers accordingly in those coroutines. So let's try that. Let's actually delete those two variables here and declare them new as a var, var answer one, which is a nullable string because we will set it in a coroutine, set it to null initially, do the same for answer two. Then we can launch a new coroutine for each answer and set answer one to network call one, do the same for answer two, network call two, and what we also have to do is we have to wait for those two coroutines to finish. So we actually have to save them in a job. So val job one and val job two, because if we wouldn't wait for that, then we would launch those coroutines, but they take three seconds to finish and our code would continue immediately with this code and it would just print answer one is null and answer two is null. So we need to call job one dot join and job two dot join. And if we now execute this code, take a look in Logcat, you can see now the requests took only about three seconds. So that is definitely better, but the approach how we do it is actually very terrible. So you definitely don't want to do it like I did here. That was a very bad practice. Instead, what we can do is we can use async. 
It is very similar to launch. It will also start a new coroutine, but it won't return a job like the launch function. Instead, it will return a deferred. And this deferred can be used to get the result of the calculation or of the network call. So we can write something like val answer one is equal to async, which will just start a new coroutine here. And inside async, we just put our function we want to execute, which is network call one. And the last line of this async function will be returned. So the result of that network call function, then we can duplicate that line, answer two and network call two. And because those answers here are no jobs anymore, which we would get from um, a launch block here, but we have an async block here. So if we take a look, press control Q, you can see it is a deferred of a string. And the string is actually the return value of that async block. So whenever we want to do something asynchronously and get a result out of that, we should use that async instead of launch. And to actually get the result, we cannot just pass answer because answer is a deferred like I showed you. Instead, we have to call answer one dot await, which will just block our current coroutine. So this one until the answer one is available and the same for answer two. So if we now rerun our app, take a look and lock it again, then you will see that our requests will take about three seconds again. So it's the exact same as we did before, but in a much better way. So you should always use async if you want to use a coroutine that returns some kind of a result. And by the way, you can also use this async instead of launch for the global scope. So we, we could just pass async here and that would work fine too. But in this time, it doesn't make any sense because our coroutine here does not return anything. So we should replace it with launch again. If you found this video helpful, then please leave a comment and a like. And also, if there is anything you didn't like about this video, please leave some constructive feedback that would be really helpful for me to improve on my content. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye bye.